we're going to learn how to make stack text. We're going to take this board right here, and we are magically going to turn it into this. Yep, stack text. Let's get to work. All right, you can see right behind me, we are in VCarve Pro Vectric Software, and uh, we are going to get started with making some stack text. And I'm going to break it down right from the beginning. We're going to show you 10, 10, count 10 easy steps to get this done. So step number one, we got to create our project. We're going to go right to create new file. And here you can see the file. This is the works. I've already pre-done it. Here is all the work parameters for this project. This is the size of my wood. Uh, there's the material surface, right center for the datum. We're going to hit save. Now, part of step one in creating this, I need to create the size of my project. So we are going to go right here to uh, create a rectangle and 21 by 8.25 is the exact dimensions of that sign I'm making. All right, the stack text sign. So I'm gonna create this and hit close and it created it in center. But if you aren't sure if it's centered, you can always click on the vector and you can hit F9 and that will center it. So look, if I take this, I'm gonna move it just to show you. So let's say for some reason it didn't put it in center and it put it here. Well, as long as you click on this vector and highlight it and you hit F9, it's gonna center it. Perfect, every time, okay? Now, this is the outside of my project. I also need an inside frame. I wanna have a little frame lip that goes around that project and I want it to be three quarters of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this vector, this square. I'm gonna come right down here to offset layout, click on that. Now, I wanna go inward from here, because that's this rectangle that I have here, this is the outside parameter I need to go in. So I'm gonna go inward right here. We're gonna make sure it says inward. I want it three quarters of an inch, 0.75 of inch, and I'm going to hit offset. Look, made the perfect square. Now that we have the borders created, we need to put them in a layer called borders, right? I'm very organized. This is all about organization in this and creating stack text. If you're not organized and you don't do it the way I'm showing you, it might get a little funky, so follow these steps. So number one, we're gonna create a layer called borders, all right? And we're just gonna take layer one, click on it right up here, layer one, I clicked on it, it highlighted it so I can change it, and I'm just gonna call it borders. Nice and simple, hit tab, it saves it, good to go, all right? Now that leads us to step two in this process. Step two is creating all the layers. So we have the border layer plus three other layers. There's gonna be the creation layer. There's going to be a layer that says top layer 2C, which is top layer to cut. And then there's going to be the bottom layer, which is gonna be the welded bottom 2C, welded bottom to cut. So I'm gonna create those real quick Fast forward while I'm doing it. I'll do the first one for you. We're gonna go to borders, go here, click on add new layer. We're gonna type it in, and this is creation layer. Now here we are, got them all typed in there, and we are going to turn them all off. Off, hitting these little light bulbs turns them off. Off, off. I'm gonna leave borders on. I don't think I'll ever turn borders off. Now I have to decide what layer am I going to work on first? Well, I'm always going to work in the creation layer to start my project. So now I can turn that layer on and make sure when you're here, it's right there. It says creation layer and it's not red. You're good to go. Okay. Now step, where are we at? Step three. Step three, you have to decide what bits you're going to use. Because if you're using V bits or angled bits, it can get pretty tricky going from one layer to the next layer and making sure those angles line up. The best thing I'm going to do for you as a beginner and learning how to do this, I'm just going to use end mills. Quarter inch end mill, I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill on this build, and I, I will be using a quarter inch ball nose in the end. It's kind of an option that I'm doing with this that you don't have to do in your stack text, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Simple. So that's step three, figure out what bits you need to use so you can figure out how you're gonna lay out your text. That brings us to step four. Let's create some text. Step four, create some text. All right, while we are in the creation layer, it says creation layer up here, 
we are going to make text. And I'm going to use this right here, text in a box. If you've never used it before, I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to click on this. And just to start with, I'm going to click on this box right here. First thing I want to do, let me see, I have it written down. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do the Mankato, just like in this sign, right? Hopefully it's not upside down, but it should say Mankato. That's going to be on there. So let's put in Mankato. I'm going to use the MV Boley text. It's more of a scriptish text, but not really, because you don't have to go through and click and fix the text. It's really easy, but it looks kind of scriptish. So we are going to keep it capitalized. Mankato. Mankato is a town in Minnesota right next to where I live. And we're going to have that script in there, but I don't want it to fill this whole box. You know, I can, if I go down here and I click on stretch characters and I go here and click on stretch characters, it fills that whole box. I think I want to shrink it. I don't want it from edge to edge in this entire thing. So the width, I already have this pre-done. I'm just going to type it in and save it some time. Okay, we're back to it. And there is the dimensions. I created a smaller box by typing in dimensions here because this is bounding box dimensions. I created my own by typing that in there. And um, I'm not going to do any margin size. I'm not going to mess with it at all. I'm going to leave it just as you see it. That's going to be the Mankato. Now, I'm going to click off of it. I want to do the numbers. There was the 56, the zip code, the 56001 on there. I am going to do that now. So I'm going right back to text in a box click on that. I am not going to use the same script. I want to do something different. And I used, on my last one, I used this twin century mountain condensed, whatever it is. This is the one I used. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to click on my box just to give it a re reference for starting. And we're going to do 56001. Now I'm going to put the numbers in that I have preset. And that was 16.07. And it was 3.55. See, it shrunk it down way too much. But watch this, because it's way shrunk. If I come over here and I click on stretch this vertically, it won't do much. But if I click on the horizontal stretch characters, fits it right into that box. Stretches it out so you can use whatever you want you want. And this is the one I used. And it fit right in. It looks kind of like a mess, but I don't want 56001 laying over the Mankato straight. I kind of want it tilted. So what I do is I come here. You see right here, this one is called Rotate Selected Objects. I'm going to click on it. With the 56001 highlighted like it is right here, I am going to go with an absolute angle and I'm going to do 9 degrees because I thought that looked the nicest. I hit Apply. And it tilts it just a little bit, just the way I want it. You can do whatever you want with yours. This is just fun and what I'm doing here. So don't put in the comments that 56001 looks stupid tilted like that because this is for fun and I don't care. I mean, I care about your opinion, but I don't care that you don't like it. So you don't have to buy it. Back to work. So now we have created all these wordings and did, the, did it. We want to start copying them to the right layers. We don't move them because we may need to come back to them later if we screw something up. We are going to copy them to the right layer. So let's go ahead and take the 56001 and we're going to highlight it red. You can see it's highlighted. We are going to right click. See where I am? I'm on the vector. I right click. I'm going to drop all the way down. You know, you can't see a thing. Let me move it. I'm going to click on this over here where you can see the drop down. Now you can see the drop down without my fat head in the way. Okay, I'm going to drop all the way down here. See where it says copy layer? Not the move layer, but the copy layer. And I'm going to copy this because the 56001 on this picture, or on this plaque, you can see the 56001 is over the top. It's the top layer. So we're going to copy that to the top layer. And I'm going to click right here. Ticket. Boom. Now it's sitting in the top layer. We, anything we put in the top layer also belongs in the bottom layer. So I'm going to copy it again to 
to the bottom layer, to the welded bottom layer. I'm going to click on it like we did before. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to the copy layer and I'm going to go welded bottom 2C. We're going to copy it there. Bam, there it is. We're going to copy what we need to copy to the bottom layer, which Mankato is the bottom layer. So I high highlight Mankato. I right click. I do copy to layer and we are going to copy it to the bottom. There it is. Now we move on to the next step. Well, step six technically was copy everything to the lower layer. Now we need to turn things off. We need to turn off layers that we are not going to use. Okay. So I'm going to go up here to the layers. I'm going to click that. I am going to turn off. I'm always going to leave borders on. I'm never going to turn off borders. I do not need the creation layer anymore. Do not delete it. Just hit this little bulb here and turn it off. Now, top layer, we can turn that on just to make sure everything was copied there. And look, 56001. Guess what? My top layer is done. I don't have to do anything else until we get to tool pass the top layer. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off by hitting the light bulb. Now, the welded layer. Now I can see both the things that I need welded there. To, all the things on the bottom are there. I'm going to click on the right here. I'm going to click here so that I'm working in this layer. And it shows that I'm working in this layer. And here we are. It's all ready for me to mess it all up. Okay. So this is step seven. We are going to weld these layers together. And why am I welding or why am I combining? Welding is a fun way of saying combine. Why am I combining the Mankato with the zip code? Because when we cut this lower layer, I don't want to cut off the zip code that I just left in the top layer. If I do that, it, if I don't weld these together, it's going to wipe it all out. You know, I don't know if I can show it very well on here, but you can see this right here is cut down all the way to the bottom. That, that lip goes from the top of this zero all the way down to the very bottom. It needs to be set up that way. That's why we're welding this together so it doesn't wipe it out later. Okay, so we are going to highlight everything. We are going to start here and just drag all the way down to this corner. We're not highlighting our borders. We're just highlighting the, the text. We highlight it all, and here's where the fun starts. We go over here, and this is the weld button. Let's see if I can get it to highlight what it says. Weld. Weld selected vectors. That's what we're going to do. We tab on this. Ooh, and it brings up fun stuff. Some objects, such as text or distorted objects, are converted to curves for this operation, which means it's not text anymore. So make sure your text is the way you want it, which is why we copied here instead of moving here, because if we mess this up, we have to start it over. Okay. Uh, would you like to replace or keep the original objects? Let's just replace them. And you'll notice it makes it dotted, which makes it curve. Those are all curves. It's not text anymore. But this is key right here. Beep, beep, beep. Pay attention. We need to change this to uh, group it together, right? So you're just going to go to your keyboard and hit the G so it groups it. Or go right here over one of the vectors, right click on your mouse. Drop all the way down to where it says group objects and just tick group objects. Boom, they're grouped. Okay, so if I click off of this and I click on the vector again, it highlights them all. Very important. Okay, you need to do that. Okay, guess what? Our bottom layer is done. We are done with the bottom layer. We are done with toolpath or done with the creation and putting everything in the layers and welding them together. Now we are on step eight. Whoop. Guess what step eight is? Step eight is create toolpath. We are going to create toolpaths now. Okay, so for those who are new, you go on to bring up your toolpath side. You go right here where I'm highlighting. Tick it. Boom. Brings up your toolpaths and they stay. So what we want to do is we want to work our toolpaths from the very top layer all the way down to the bottom layer. So we're going to start with the top layer. So guess what that means? We're going to go up here to layers, open it up. We are going to get rid of the bottom layer. Now it's empty. The only thing that we see are the borders. Right now, we're going to open up the top and we're going to click on it. We are now working on the top layer to cut. That's all we're working on right now. Okay. 
So when we get to our tool pass, we bring up the when we bring up the menu, we want to go right here. And this is a pocket tool pass. It's where we're going to start. Pocket tool pass. So our start depth is going to be at the top of the piece of wood. And I want to cut down one tenth of an inch. 0.1 is what I want to put in there for my cut depth. I only want it to go that deep. That's how high my 56001, so that text is going to be risen up. That's how high it's going to be. So I don't think I'm going to need, I don't think I need the eighth inch. I'm just going to remove this one. We're just going to work with a quarter inch end mill on this. So um, let's go ahead and edit this. I have the Onefinity machine. I'm just going to do a feed rate of 150. I'm just going to bump this up to 50. Um, spindle speed 1400. We're all good here. All right, my step over 40%. Don't care. It's most of it's going to get cut out anyway. Um, that's the speed we're going to go with. We'll see what the time ends up being at the end. Hit OK. All right, we got that done. Now it's going to do it all in one pass. That's fantastic. We don't want to do offset. If you do offset, it's going to spin from the middle. In the middle of that zero of the 56001, it's going to start in the middle. And it's going to work in circles. That's dumb. It's not, not going to work. It's going to look awful. You can do it. I don't do it. I am going to use raster. I want it to start in the corner and just go back and forth across this project and clear everything out. Okay. I think that's more efficient. It's going to look nicer. Uh, I'm trying to keep this rustic. That will help with that. And I'm going to do climb cut because when it goes around the outside, around the frame, I want it to be nice and clean. Uh, I don't want to raster at an angle. But what I am going to do, see right here where it says profile pass? I am going to do a profile pass at the end. I'm going to do that last. I just want it to clean up everything after it goes back and forth because that bit bumps into that frame and back and forth and it leaves little grooves. So it does need to clean everything up at the end. Do a last profile pass in this situation. Of course, we're going to ramp. I take double the size of the bit typically, which is half an inch. I'm going to use that. I don't need a pocket allowance. Don't need anything else. But let's name this puppy. This is top to cut, and it's going to be a one quarter end mill for the bit. I always put the bit in there just so I can double check before I start my toolpath at the machine that I have the right bit in there. And let's hit, oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't highlight the vectors we need. So we are going to pocket out between this frame and hold down the shift and between this number. We are going to cut out everything in here. It's going to cut out in the zeros. It's going to cut out this in this six. It's going to cut all this out, right? Now that those are highlighted, we hit calculate. Let me hit reset preview. All right. So you can see the tool pass and where they're going to cut looks good so far. But let's go ahead and see what they look like. We're going to hit preview all tool pass. Boom. Look at that. It cut it right out. Let's make this easy. Here's a little trick. If you didn't know how this works, and I tricked just a little feature. While this is highlighted, you can go up here, tick on toolpath color, drop it down, just make it red, and it highlights everything that's been cut for this toolpath. So it shows everywhere it cut, makes it a little easier. If I uh, bump this up, you can see there's a little lip here. It's all been cut. Okay. If you ever wonder how to get back, right here, boom, brings it straight and square. Okay. Well, that was pretty easy. That was top layer. Now, so we don't get confused, we are gonna go to our layers. We are gonna turn off layer two. We are going to turn on the welded layer that we made. There it is. And we are gonna click on this so that we are working on that layer. You can see here, it says we're working on welded bottom 2C. If we were on the wrong layer, say I clicked on this and it's, it's showing it red. That means there's a problem and you're probably on the wrong layer. Go here. Boom. Okay. Now we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to do a pocket tool path. So let's click on our vectors. Hold shift. Oop. Hold shift. Click on that one too, because we want to cut out everything here. And go right to pocket tool path up here. Create it. Now here is where there seems to be some confusion a lot of times. We started our layer one at the top and we cut down one tenth of an inch. Now we want to go from that one tenth of an inch and cut down another tenth of an inch for the Mankato. So our start depth is where the last layer left off. 
So we're going to start at point one, where we ended our cut for layer one. Now we're into layer two, and I want to cut down from there. I want to cut down point one, okay? Now, this is a little more intricate. We, we do need this quarter inch end mill. We are going to use that, but we do need something a little smaller to fit into these spots. Now, again, this rustic, this is going to be a rustic sign, so it's not going to be perfect. I'm not going to use, you know, ball nose or any tapered bits to get in there, but I am going to, well, let's go ahead and edit our speeds. We're all good here. We're going to add an eighth inch end mill right there. Um, most of my end mills, most of my bits now I get from IDC Woodcraft. Love, love Garrett's channel. Love his, his bits. If you need bits, you can get some there. If you don't feel comfortable buying from Garrett, I'll leave a link in the description below for him, but I also leave a link for some other bits that might be all right. Uh, if you're a beginner and looking for something cheap to start with, I'll throw some of those down there, but I do highly recommend getting bits from Garrett at IDC Woodcraft. Amazing bits, and you're supporting someone else who is teaching on, on YouTube and helping people learn how to use a CNC. Uh, find his community, great community to follow along to. All right, so eighth inch end mill. Uh, let's go ahead and edit our settings for this. I think we can, yeah, I think we can get away with a, with a hundred. I'm gonna keep the plunge rate though a little lower. I'm just gonna call it 35. Yeah, maybe I'll do 90. We'll run with this. Doesn't have to be super fast. There's nothing too detailed that's gonna break or anything here. Uh, all right, and wow, well, that's fast. We're gonna do 14,000. All right, I'm gonna hit OK. Save it there. We'll see how this turns out for time. All right. So here we're still going to do the same when we're on this quarter inch. We're going to check the raster. We're going to leave the raster there. We're still going to do a climb. We're still going to have a last pass. And we're going to do that. Now for the eighth inch, we don't need any of that. Just leave it the way it shows here. You want it on climb or conventional, you can pick one. It's going to take two passes. It's okay. You could probably do it in one, but it's okay. Ramp moves. I'm not going to ramp anything. We're just going to go ahead and and leave it at the half inch that it is. But this we are going to call welded bottom one quarter end mill, one eighth end mill. That way I know what bits I'm using for each of these. Now check it. We're going to do the calculate. I got everything, all my vectors ticked. I do. And we're going to hit calculate. Now, because it looks like a goofy mess, we are going to go ahead and hit um, reset. I bet my head was in the way for a lot of that. Let me move out of the way, guys. Sorry. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit reset, and we're going to do preview all tool pass. There it is. Now, while this is highlighted, let's go ahead and give this a fun color like orange. Let's do this one. Fun color like orange. Look at that. Nice contrast. Looks ugly. Awesome. All right, so the orange is where it cut everything out. You can see if we would have used like a, I don't know, a tapered ball nose, a tapered ball nose or, you know, a 30 degree bed or something, we could have cleaned this up a little better. But again, it's a rustic sign, so we're just going to leave it. But yeah, cut out great there. So what do we need to do next? Well, I have a little something fun up my sleeve. Let's go here and I am going to highlight the frame, highlight the welded. We don't, I'm well, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a tool path that adds texture in the background. You can see it on this sign. You can see there's texture in that background. You can see it in there. You know, if I angle it, tilt it, you can see that texture in there. That's what I'm going to do with this sign. I'm going to add some texture in there. I want to keep it looking rustic. Okay. So, how do we do that, you ask? Well, we're going to go to this toolpath right here. And this is called texture. If I get it to light up, texturing toolpath. We're going to click on it. Now, I'm going to texture between the welded. We only need the welded part and this, this right here, right? going to pocket. It's just going to cut little grooves in the bottom here. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to use a ball nose, a quarter inch ball nose. And you know what, while we're talking about it, 
here are all, here's an image of all the bits we're using a quarter inch end mill eighth inch end mill and a quarter inch ball nose okay just so you know what they are so a quarter inch ball nose is what we're going to use here let's go ahead and set this up 150 50 plunge rate and 1600 whatever that's fine it's cutting so shallow it doesn't matter we could even go faster than that if we wanted to but i'm not i'm just going to keep it simple all right now our start depth if we're going to texture that bottom layer guess what we have to do that where that bottom layer left off so the top layer was at zero and we cut down to one tenth the next layer layer two we started at one tenth and cut down to two tenths so our bottom layer is at two tenths right well let's go from there actually i think if you go if you're ever curious if you go here and you look right here and you hover your mouse over this spot keep an eye right here Oop. Keep an eye at the bottom right down here. It will show you how deep this groove is. And it is 0.2. So if you're ever curious, you'll know. If I hover over the Mankato, see it changes to 0.1. And if I hover over the zip code, see it's at zero. So if you're ever curious, you know how to find it. There it is. Okay, so let's go back to the 2D view. All right, now we're back in this texture tool path. So we need to start it at 0.2, which I did right here. The start depth is at 0.2. And we're going to cut little grooves. Okay, now I have my own preset for this. So I'm gonna load it just to make sure it's in here. It's all loaded and this is what I use. You can pause it here and copy this or you can mess around and find something you like. I just like these because they're a little wider, a little longer. Um, makes it look like worn wood. So use these settings if you want or create your own and have fun. Okay, that brings us to boundary vector offset this guys so how do you explain it so this right here is the edge of your text let me make myself a little bigger here to show you this this is the edge of your text and you're running your bit and it's coming in and if you have zero vector offset that bit is going to run right into the edge of your letters or the edge of the frame before it picks up and moves to the other side so this is it's going to bump here it's going to lift up it's going to go over down here bumping into it and then continuing right so but if we have an offset it comes up to the edge of that frame just barely before it hits it lifts up comes over goes down without hitting that side and keeps going right so we want our bit to stop before it bumps into anything and that's what that boundary is that that gap in there right where we're looking that is the boundary offset i'm going to show you what it looks like with zero and then I'm going to show you what it looks like with one. Okay, so I'm just going to call this texture one, whoop, one quarter ball nose. Let me get out of the way again. One quarter ball nose. That's what I titled it at. I'm right here. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do, oh, nope, we got to highlight our vectors. It's all going to be between this and this, right? Highlight that so it cuts and does it all in, does the texturing all in here. Otherwise, if we did not highlight anything, it would texture over the entire board and ruin everything. It'd probably break your bit too. It would ruin everything. Okay? You don't want that. You make sure you highlight where you want it to cut. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit calculate. We are going to reset our preview. So we are right here, reset preview. And we're going to do preview all tool pass. Boom, 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 boom. And well, would you look at that? If we don't have an offset, that bit runs right into here and into here and into here. Look how horrible that is. That's disgustingly bad. So let's go ahead and create the offset, that boundary offset. We're going to go back into the texture. And right here, we're at the boundary offset. I'm just going to do, let's see, the bit is a quarter inch. It's 0.25, so that's 0.12. Let's do half that, 0.15. We're gonna deal with that, see how, not point, point, that'll give me an error, 0.15. That is the offset. That's a little more than half the distance of the bit, so it should not run into it, but we'll find out. All right, we're gonna do calculate. We are going to do reset preview, and then preview all tool pass. Let's see how it looks, fingers crossed. Look at that did not bump into it anywhere. Just to highlight this a little better, let's go to texture 
and we're gonna go up here and make that purple. Let's make this as ugly of colors as we can do. All right, so we have this little gap right here. That's that boundary offset. It cut right up to it as close as that 0.15 would let. It didn't bump into any edges. It kind of looks good to me. I think that's great. Now we have one last tool path to create. We need to create a profile. We need to cut this thing out. So, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right here in this in this welded bottom, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go to profile tool path, click on that. My piece of lumber is three quarters of an inch, so I'm gonna go to, what is that, one thousandth deeper than that, so it cuts through the piece, hopefully, and not very much into my spoil board. I'm gonna use an up cut quarter inch end mill so it pulls that sawdust out of the way. It's gonna take five passes. We wanna go outside, because we're doing this, this vector right here. We wanna go outside for our cut. I don't need an allowance. I don't need a separate last path. I do wanna add tabs. Um, let's go ahead and hit edit tabs here. And I want four of them. I'm gonna hit add tabs. See it added these tabs. If you ever wanna move them around, you just hover the plus sign over it until it says X, and then you can slide it around and it moves it, okay? Or you can add more, whatever you want. I'm gonna have four, that's plenty. And they're pretty long and pretty, they're pretty thick too, so whatever, I'm gonna deal with it, it'll be fine. And then add ramps. Oh, and you know, with these, it really doesn't matter because I have a really cool method of removing those tabs. I've never seen anybody use it and I just haven't shared it with anybody because I don't think about it. But I will share it later showing you how I clear my tabs out and uh, it's a pretty sweet deal. All right, I'll show you what it is. So stay tuned for that. Don't leave till you see it. Yeah, anyway, so add tabs to the toolpath or add uh, ramps. Yep, we're gonna just do a smooth ramp. It's set in an inch, I'm just gonna leave it. And we're just gonna call this profile quarter inch end mill. And I'm going to hit calculate. And it's going to warn me that it's gonna cut through and I'm gonna say, yes, it does. All right, now we're gonna do the same reset and then preview all tool paths. Fingers crossed, oh, it turned out great. This is exactly what we wanted to see. We wanna see it cut all of that out. So that brings us what, to step uh, nine. That's what we're doing here. This is step nine. Check everything, make sure it looks great. Does it bump into anything? Do these layers look right? Um, cutting everything out, looks great. So you know what we do from here? We move on to step 10, which is say, oh no, we wanted to see time frame. Let's just check that real quick. This really isn't anything you have to do, but if you go here, and you click on this button, it'll show us our time. Hour and 12 minutes. Yeah, I could probably push these bits a lot faster than I'm pushing them and it'll cut them faster. But you know what? I'm not in a big hurry and we'll just get it done. So that's the time frame that I'm gonna use. Uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, so after this, we just wanna save our tool paths. This is step 10, saving them. I usually save them as visible tool paths to multiple files so I can see each of the files and they all have their bits. I just do save tool path and I save it and I take it to my machine, which as you can see here, I have a Onefinity. I cut them all in there, works great. Love the machine, I have a review for it. If you wanna see it, it's up somewhere, whatever. But stay tuned because I'm gonna show you how to cut this out. I'm gonna show you the machine, cutting it on the machine. I'm gonna show you my tip for cutting out those tabs, save you a lot of headache, and uh, yeah, and then show you, I've seen, you've seen the finished product already, but I'll show you it again. So uh, if you learned something so far, please hit the like button. Help me out so other people can see this and learn how to do this. Otherwise, the 10 steps, I will have them listed in the description. Feel free to copy them, share them, use them, whatever. That's what this community is for, is to share and learn. So hopefully you're learning here. Uh, if not, Nice knowing you. No, just kidding. Uh, but hopefully you're learning something. If so, hit that like button. If you want to help out and subscribe and feel like you want to learn what I can teach and subscribe, I appreciate that just as much. So thanks, guys. Let's meet in the garage. Ready, set, go.
All right, so I just finished my city zip code sign that I'm carving out. And one thing I want to share with you guys, I think this is important, is these tabs. I've seen people just cut these tabs and just destroy their signs and make a mess. I've seen people use little saws like this and they get in there and try and flush trim it. Uh, I've seen videos where people are using like a multi-tool, digging it in there, and I've used this too. Uh, but there's one thing trim router and then Amana makes this little tiny bit it's the it's just a 3 16 inch bit I'll try and get you a close-up of it uh, this little bit right here this thing fits if you use a quarter inch to do the profile on any signs or anything you make if you use a quarter inch on your CNC do the profile this little bit will fit right in there. And there's wiggle room because it's 3 16 And it's a flush trim. There's a little bearing on there. And Amana makes this, I wrote down the model number was it's the MR0103 flush trim ball bearing bit. I've had this bit for probably four or five years now. This thing is fantastic. It, you only use it to cut these little things so it lasts forever. You don't have to worry about sharpening it. Fits right in your trim router. Please don't buy a Ryobi trim router if you use it every day. This bit stays in this trim router because it's all it's good for. So then you just tighten it up, fits right in there, and you buzz right around. So I'm gonna show you how that works and I'll show you the results because this trim, this little, the ball bearing on here, if you ride it along the edge, it cuts this flush. It's like you never had tabs on there at all. It cuts it flush as can be. So let's give it a little test, show you how it goes. Did a great job. So this little Amana flush trim, the MR0103, 3 sixth inch ball bearing flush trim bit, man, I couldn't do it without this. This is a great little tool, great little tip for you. I would miss this thing if I did not have it. So I'll leave a link in the description and go there, get one. They are great. Not sponsored by Amana or anything. Just telling you it's a good little bit.